Let's just launch into this series of sermons. It, uh, the name of the series is The True Purpose of the Church, and it will be a, uh, a, a study on the way that churches should function. Now, this is taken for granted in a lot of ways that, number one, you are uh, have come to know Jesus Christ as your Savior. If not, we need to start there, and I will have a one sermon on that for you that we can uh, back up and have this. But for right now, assuming that I'm talking to church members, many, many church members today have a, a misunderstanding of what church is. They believe that a church is a social gathering of where we all come together in one building and we worship the Lord and we and we reach out and, and, and befriend each other and um, it gets to be very, very much a, 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 a corporate worship for each of us to be fueled up. That is one of the purposes, but it's not the one I'm talking about today. The true purpose of the church, sermon number one, is, is that we are designed to come together to get fired up for a purpose, and that purpose is that we would lead others to this same relationship in Christ. And now, this is not this is not thinking that for one minute that once you're saved that it becomes a oh this is wonderful we just get to just worship together meet together and then we're done. No, the true purpose of the church is to to come together to learn more of God's word to be able to go out and apply that God, that word of God in a form of a local mission. First of all, to the people around us who need to know Jesus Christ. I am a firm believer in what I have nicknamed many, many years ago, this, a sphere evangelism approach. You can't just live your Christianity and, and, and a lifestyle evangelism. People do see you and say, what's different? That's, that's good. You can't just go beat on doors and uh, and 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 embarrass people into coming to church. I believe that there is a spherical way of looking at this, and that is both of these are true. Both of these other methods are ex are, are good ways of doing it. Don't get me wrong. You today's society. A lot of times, it, people don't pay attention to who you are. Therefore, lifestyle evangelism doesn't work. And people don't really want to be bothered in their homes until they come to Christ they need to be reached out to. So here is, the, here is what my, my advice is. Learn to look at your own Christian life as a sphere that you are in the center of. And God has developed this, uh, imagine yourself in a, a clear beach ball, if you will. And you are the little one in the middle, and all around you is this sphere. God intends for us to trust Him to be able to bring into your sphere who you need to speak to, who you need to witness to, who you need to live your life in front of each day so that they get to see Jesus Christ. So if you get up every morning and pray, Lord, bring into my sphere those that you want me to talk to. Number one, I don't feel overwhelmed that I have to win the whole world. I just need to talk to those that are in my sphere. Now, several things can happen inside that sphere. Some people may need to know Jesus Christ as their Savior, and they may be ready from talking to other people or seeing your life or, or hearing you talk. They may be ready to be able to come to know Jesus Christ. Those you need to know how to lead to the Lord. Lead them to Christ and let Christ bring them in and save them. Now, uh, this 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 totally defies Calvinism or 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 the very opposite to where we feel like somehow we are not uh, that you know maybe some people aren't uh, going to come to Christ because they're not supposed to come to Christ. Um, maybe they're not called. This takes that away. 
because as you pray for God to give you those who you need to influence you let God bring them in those that are not inside your sphere obviously are not accessible to you right then so it helps you not focus on everyone it helps you say Lord I want to win many bring many into my sphere so that I can witness or be a, a, an example to uh, what you will find when you do that is is that there will be a wide range wide vast arrangement of people who come in there will be those who are in the in the position of ready to listen like we talked about there will be those also who are who are just seeking out what Christianity is and those are usually going to be long-term type contacts God will keep bringing them in to your life if you notice one person starting to show up over and over and over into your life uh, into your sphere mark it down God may want you very much to take care of the business of responding to that one person uh, on a daily basis so let's let's get together and let's look at this now then, who else might come into your sphere the, the those that need Jesus Christ those that number two those that are in desperate need of encouragement today will show up you will find that someone comes in to your life and they just seem to saturate themselves with whatever you're telling them that's not you that's not you being a, a wonderful type person uh, that, that that you have done that that is God that has brought that person into your life and what they are seeing is they are seeing Christ in you way 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 more important than you being somebody that is that is impressive enough that they would want to talk to you so here's what we wanted to, we want to look for those who are seeking Christ and have God has put them into your sphere we see those who are in desperate need of encouragement I highly 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 encourage you to realize that what the verses I'm going to start out with here today frame our understanding of what we should what we should have as our driving purpose as a church here we are it comes from Mark 12 28 through 34 then one of the scribes came and having heard them reason to get reasoning together perceived that he had answered them well and asked him which is the first commandment of all Jesus answered him the first of all commandments is here O Lord O Israel the Lord our God the Lord is one and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. So number one, number one part of our commandment to, uh, and this fulfills all the law. This fulfills the law of Moses. It fulfills the, first, the Ten Commandments. These, these two commandments will fulfill all of the law. And this, this one is to love the Lord with all your heart. If you love the Lord with all your heart, you're going to want to serve Him. You're going to want to have everything that you can in you to reach out and to, and to uh, make Him, make him the, the, the God of your, of your blessing. Okay? And here, here we go. And then he says, And you shall love the Lord with your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. Okay, now, and this is the second, which is like it, 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 it's this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. So the scribe said to him, Well said, teacher, you have spoken the truth. For there is one God, and there is no other but He. And to love Him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, with all the soul, with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself is more than all the burnt, whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. Now when Jesus saw that He answered wisely, He said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. But after that, no one dared question him speaking of Jesus so so we see that, that that we have a mandate if you will given to us from God that we love the Lord so much everything else pales out and number two that we love one another 
and love our neighbor and in another place he explained who our neighbor is it's not the ones that just agree with you it is everyone that God says to you here's an example Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 and it says but you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and into the uttermost parts of the earth okay take those four he told us that when we realize that we have got a purpose as a church that exists in evangelizing the lost we will find out that the power is not ours he says you will receive that power but in an earlier verse he said all power is given me in heaven and in earth go ye therefore and preach the gospel so when we get to, to Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 we find that he says that we shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon us so when you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior the Holy Spirit the Holy Ghost came upon you he gives you the 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 ability the power in them and the that word power means dynamite he gives you this explosive power of being able to do his will and you just need to submit to that he says then you will be witnesses to me now notice this in Jerusalem that's the area right around where you live that's your friends that's your family that's the people in your sphere that 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 are right there with you in and out every day and then he says and in all Judea spread it out a little ways you've heard this before spread it out a little ways and that is the influence around the the next part of your life and then he says something interesting that we really don't like to hear but we have to Samaria Samaria was an area that the Jews did not like they didn't like the people they didn't like to walk on the, those people's ground they would walk around Samaria if they had to walk from point A to point B when they come to Samaria they went around the border of the country and they went around Samaria they didn't go through it and, uh, and, and in a couple of different occasions we see that Jesus went through Samaria because he told his, his disciples I must go through Samaria and there was someone in there that he needed to speak to so we see that you're going to be asked to speak sometimes to people where your heart is not comfortable with it where you don't really want to the people you don't really care for people you don't maybe they have a lifestyle that you don't like maybe they have a a, a belief system that you don't don't like to confront and the truth is is to be a, a true faithful witness we have to see ourselves able to be able to go into that area and, uh, and 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 be a witness to those people so as we go through this we have to come into this understanding uh, so, so okay we have this we have no problem then understanding that we the church a member of the body of Christ now you notice I said this little church that I am pastoring right now is a member of the body of Christ and each of the parts of a body are different a finger is different from a toe a, a some people have more empathy in one area than in another so will churches we need to see ourselves corporately not as a loner but that we have been called to join together with true believers that have joined themselves together that have been called out from the world and joined together to be able to um, to be able to proclaim Christ we need to do that corporately and we have been given a purpose and that purpose is to love our neighbors so much that we want to spend eternity with Christ and we want them to to do so also so we take um, the chance of saying God bring into my sphere those that are in need of being able to uh, hear the gospel those that you may give me that can that can uh, be influenced by my life maybe they're going to do nothing but be lurkers like on Facebook You're, you know I, I'm not against technology 
Uh, Facebook has become one of my favorite missionary endeavors. I try to keep myself, as we all should in all of our lives, I try to keep myself above the stupid stuff that goes on in Facebook and to give myself an ability to say this I can write I can write this and someone may just need this little encouragement I'll see something come down that that, that really means something to me and I will go ahead and put it on my page that's witness that's an encouragement people come into your sphere to be able to be encouraged we live in a very discouraging world and we need to understand that we have hope and that others who are around us need hope therefore God is calling you to be a hope to them in their lives okay so we are to love our neighbor and we are therefore to love our God to love the Lord by loving our neighbor and we're going to love our neighbor in a form of evangelism. When you go outside of your church this Sunday, stamp on your heart a, a slogan that many churches have on their back door. And I think it's great. You are now entering the mission field. You came into that church that day to worship and to enjoy the, the fellowship of others. But it was not just for your enjoyment the songs are beautiful they encourage us but it's not the purpose to to just come together and sing together and go out feeling lighthearted and wonderful and say okay I can't wait till next week I mean that's great if you have that if they have that opinion of your church but the real function of coming together is to get fired up to go out into your mission field and loving your neighbor is the beginning of your mission field. It's the beginning of your outreach in evangelism. So I'm going to encourage you today. I'm going to encourage you to take the time to uh, bring a, a friend or a uh, someone in your sphere. Uh, maybe take them out for coffee. And just talk to them. And just listen to what they need. Be they Christians or be they people who have never heard the word of God before. They're in your sphere. You find them there and you say, let's go have coffee. Sit down and talk to that person and let the Holy Spirit bring it to what that person needs. Don't try to take that and go with it and say, I have to talk about this. No. Sit and listen without planning where you're going to go next. Sit and listen and let that person open up and give you an idea of what they want. This may take more time than just one time. You may want to do this with each person that you can. If you find somebody that's on, an, on a repetitive basis needing to talk to you, start the idea that this is your job of a mentor to come together, to sit together, and start a relationship where you can open the Word of God and start to help that person find their answers. Maybe that person that you're going to talk to this week is uh, unsaved. Um, and they may, need, they may need just to know that God loves them and God wants them for an eternity. I, I heard a testimony this morning of a little, a little man in the Alka Indians that... that, that uh, that after in 1956 after they had uh, had um, um, the missionaries who had come to see them and bring the gospel they had their tribe had killed them and he and he was preaching this morning because it, it led to even though those missionaries lost their lives it led to an incredible opening of that tribe to the gospel of Jesus Christ and as they as he put it the elders of many times when when the villages are attacked the children are instructed to flee into the into the bush out into the jungle and after the battle is over they the kids would come back and they would find the trail wherever that tribe's elders their fathers 
had gone to start another village, they would find their father's markings and he would leave them markings how to follow. And each of them would go wherever their father went. And he said, and, and his point was, follow the blood of Jesus Christ that marks the trail to your father. See, many times when we get together and we meet together with people, we have a planned agenda. It's a great thing to have great thing to have a plan but don't let your plan override their needs learn to sit and listen without planning what you're going to say while they're speaking learn to sit and listen to what they need and let the Holy Spirit bring to you what they need so as you reach out into your community as you reach out into your sphere focus on the fact that many people are going to need to just have need love you may have a person in your sphere that is another Christian and they may need just encouragement. Please take the time to encourage each other, love each other, be there for each other. And as you take care of the evangelism through this fear that God brings into your life, you're going to find out more and more and more that he, he brings more and more and more and he gives you more to say and he gives you more to encouragement and he you know what I'll tell you a little secret about, about what I see in my sphere all the time every time I go through a line and that and, and, and I pay for my goods and that cashier says to me have a good day I find it an incredible opening to simply say all days are good days this is what I have learned all days are good days the Lord our God has created every one of those days therefore we are to live it as a good day we have a choice we can wake up and have a bad day we can wake up and have a good day and our Lord leaves us a, a, a message to when we are faced with life and death, blessings and cursings, we are to choose life. We are to choose blessing. So we can get up every day and choose to have a good day. And that little bit of encouragement a lot of times makes their eyes shot. Makes that person stop and think about their life. I may never get a chance to speak of Jesus Christ to that person again. But see, it's not all about you winning people to the Lord. It's about you planting the seed you watering a seed you may be fertilizing a seed and it may be you who gets to be there whenever the harvest comes in but don't focus on that give that the holy spirit and let the holy spirit lead that individual into the, what they need so until we talk again i'm gonna close out i would i, I bless you in the name of jesus christ to be able to have whatever God wants you to have in your sphere today. So I pray that your life would be filled with opportunities and that you would be able to be a reason why the purpose of the church is being fulfilled in your church. Father, God, we ask you to be the one who brings people into our spheres, the one who takes care of our needs. All of this, Lord, is vital to us being able to fulfill the purpose that you have given us. So God, we ask that you would be the one who is glorified in all we do. And all God's people said, Amen.